Hey mamas, this video is your self diastasis check. I am here with our amazing coach Charlene and we are going to walk you and guide you through checking out your core postpartum and seeing and feeling what is going on. Um, hopefully you're also using this with our six week core rehab series, but it's also just a nice video. If you are working to healing an injury based diastasis, you can kind of come back to this video or back to the concept of this video for your self check to check in with how your healing is going and, or simply to get a baseline understanding of what is going on with your core postpartum so that you can choose what you do within Studio Bloom to either address an injury-based diastasis or simply rebuild the foundation and strengthen from there. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to walk you ladies through various planes of lifting and lowering and some gentle TVA focused movements to help you assess the varying aspects of what could be going on with the core. So the first thing that we're going to do is um, have Charlene not activate the core the best she can, which may also be hard for those of you who have been incorporating core and pelvic floor work the way that we do here at Bloom. But I want you to do your best to try and not engage the core. We're going to move you through varying lifting stages, palpate the core, feel what's going on. We'll rest. We'll do that same thing with an activated core and pelvic floor, and then we'll test the function of your core. So before we get started, I also want you to know what you're testing for, right? It is very common that we are told to test the width of this quote unquote separation. But if you've been with Bloom for a while, you know that separation is common and normal and actually really healthy in pregnancy. What we want to avoid is the weakness of that linea alba, that connective tissue, because as that connective tissue weaks through improper management of pressure, improper movement, etc., we can sometimes end up with an injury based diastasis. And that just takes a little bit more work to address. So while the width is important and it does tell us something, it is not the end all be all. And it most definitely is not always going to tell you whether you have a healthy level of diastasis or an unhealthy or injury based level of diastasis. What we want to look for to help us understand the really what's going on with our core is the depth. So we'll talk about that as we're moving through this, but I just want you guys to know, let go of this concept of closing your gap as your body heals, as you restrengthen that gap will start to narrow, but your rectus has never touched. So because of that, and because of the placement of the connective tissue, you will likely always have a level of separation between your rectus muscles and completely regain full function and even aesthetic results that you want with your core. So let's get started. Charlene, I know we already laughed about this. She's like, it's really hard to not activate my core and lift. I know, but you're going to do the best you can. I'm going to have you roll your pants down a little bit. And then you are going to lay down on your back, feet flat on the floor. You can extend your legs if you want. I prefer to have feet flat on the floor personally. And you are gonna just lift one inch. So just head, neck, and barely the tip of your shoulders come up. Good. And then you're gonna palpate. Now, if you were doing this at home by yourself for this self check, your palm is gonna face you and you're going to palpate this way. Okay. And you're just feeling in, don't press really deep because it could give you an inaccurate reading of what's going on. So we want to be really gentle. Charlene's tricky because she doesn't have diastasis, but it's still really good to check in with this stuff. Then you're going to relax. You're going to take note of what you felt. Maybe write it down if that is helpful for you. Then we're going to do the same thing. Still not activating. And now we're going to lift up just a little higher. So one to two and a half inches higher than before. And we're going to feel, 
and you're gonna note what you feel, how it changes depending on the range of motion of your lift. Good, notice depth, what? Do you feel anything? Charlene's like, what do you, what do you feel on me? Um, so the lunch. I feel, I do not feel your lunch girl. Um, I do feel things shift and that's what I want you guys to note. What you're going to feel is probably things change with each lift that you do, but we'll talk about that at the end. So I'll let you know, girl rest. And then last but not least, this is your third and final plane. I want you to lift all the way up to where the top of your rib cage comes up. Yes. Perfect. Do you see how her abs come out just a little bit? That is indication that she's increased her pressure and because I don't have her engaging her core, we get that tiny little bulge. So I am actually gonna tell you now what I feel with those three ranges of motion. In this most pressurized space with her lifting and not activating her core, I feel her muscles and her rectus, so her rectus muscles more than I could in the lower sections. Um, but I'm still just feeling for the separation between her rectus muscles and really trying to check that depth. This girl ain't got nothing. So I can't get really deep into her separation at all. And I can feel a tiny little ridge, like there's like a tiny bit of separation and that is normal. It is totally normal. I have it myself. Relax. Okay. Take note of everything that you just felt within your body. Now we're going to engage, take that S breath, engage pelvic floor, wrap your core, hold this engagement and lift head and neck. Maybe a tiny bit of the shoulders. Beautiful girl, please. Blue method all the way. She's been working on this. Now, what I feel in her core specifically is full activation, muscles are fired. There is no separation whatsoever. She is managing her pressure. Now I'm gonna let you relax. Take note of that. Relax, re-engage. And then we're gonna lift up one to two and a half inches higher. Good. And nothing is changing for her at this point. Some of you at home may notice a narrowing of your separation with each level of lifting higher. Good. Relax. And ultimately that's what we want to feel, especially now that we're engaging the core and managing that pressure. Engage the pelvic floor lift. This will be the final one. Beautiful engagement, Charlene and lift. This time, this is where you're going to bring the top of that rib cage up. Girlfriend. You've been working on this. The last time I tested her during our licensee retreat, she had a little bit of separation at the belly button that is completely gone. Girlfriend. Good job. Relax. Okay. So take note of that. Did you feel deep? in between the ridges of your rectus muscles. What that is going to tell you, your depth is everything. So fingernail and the, like the cuticle, totally normal. Sometimes even to that first knuckle, depending on how early postpartum you are, totally normal does not even mean that you fall into injury-based diastasis, especially if you are anywhere between six, eight, and sometimes even 12 weeks postpartum, we've got to give our bodies time to heal before we go slapping an, a potential injury onto it, okay? So um, cuticle line, a fingernail, first knuckle, within normal range. When we start to get deeper than that, so in between the first and second knuckle and on, that is really when, we, <laughs> you have to check that out. That is really when we are getting into that injury-based diastasis. Now, if you are really early postpartum and you're like, okay, my depth feels normal, my width feels normal, and 
I'm gonna go through the core rehab and then I'm gonna retest myself at the end of the core rehab. Awesome. Retest yourself and note where the depth changed and where the width changed, but the depth is always going to tell you so much more. Then as you're healing your diastasis, it's not always about this test that we run ourselves through. It's about how do you control your core connection in a core specific exercise? Can you manage your intra-abdominal pressure throughout the exercise? And as you're re-strengthening, you are going to have moments of absolutely, yes, I can. And then you're gonna work and you're gonna start fatiguing your core. And all of a sudden that same plank that you could hold so fiercely and, and manage that IAP, halfway through it, you're gonna go, oh my gosh, I just lost my core control. I cannot manage my IAP. That is when you're simply gonna modify because strength doesn't happen overnight. And especially when we're healing our body from carrying our babies and birthing our babies. So be patient with yourself. Last test we're gonna run through is our function test. This is going to tell us how our core and our core activation and our ability to manage IAP relates to an actual exercise recruiting the deep core. So I'm gonna have you stay in this position. You're gonna engage pelvic floor and core, really knit that rib cage at the top. Good, hold it. So then shift to your active core breath and bring one leg at a time up, knees stack on top of your hips. Maintain that second leg. It's always gonna get the core, so be ready for it. Good job. And then I want you to flex your feet, toes up towards the ceiling, really drive your heels. Good. And then you're gonna extend, exhale, pull it back in. So gentle leg extensions, if this is too much, do a very small range of motion where you're dropping your heel down towards the floor versus that extension. What does your body need? And it doesn't have to be that large of a range of motion. Good, now as you do this, which this can be a little tricky, so you can always have a friend or your partner help you, you're gonna test and palpate that same line of the linea alba. Look at her testing herself, beautiful. And I feel the same thing. Charlene's function is exactly what I would expect it to be from the two previous tests, but linea alba is right up there, super close to her skin, so there's no depth at all. I can't even get in here. Her muscles are recruited, they're on fire, they are working consistently to control both the extension, and then she works and goes even deeper to pull the leg in. So all you're wanting to do is feel into that. Notice if the tension, you can relax my dear, if the tension in your linea alba is changing, notice and try to feel into, does the linea alba stay taut with my muscles engaged around it as I either drop the heel, whether it's two inches or all the way to the ground and pick it up or that same extension in the range of motion that suits you, does the linea alba stay taut or am I able to, holy cow, in that neutral position with legs stacked, linea alba feels good and then as soon as I start to move, maybe the separation opens back up, I feel that, the linea, uh, the linea alba starts to kind of like dump a little bit because that elasticity isn't there, that tautness isn't there. These are simple indicators that are helping you guys understand where your body is at as you begin to heal and address your re-strengthening needs. This is not show up, test yourself, put a stamp of injury versus non-injured on your body and then keep going. This is a check-in and you can do this as often as you need, but let's be real, don't come here every week. Don't be testing yourself every week, whether you come to this video or you just remember what I taught you to do and you're doing it at home. Give yourself the ability and the time that your body needs to heal and re-strengthen and then come back and test. So 
Try not to be here more than every three to six weeks and then just keep showing up. Me and my team are always here. So if you have questions, always reach out. And of course, see a pelvic floor physical therapist or return to your OBGYN or midwife or doula and ask them for their advice in your healing journey. If this simple self-test leaves you with a lot of questions, do not go at this alone if you have questions. There are those of us here that want to support you. How are you feeling, girl? I was like, damn, those are rock hard. Look at so that. She, she's impressed with herself. I hope you guys feel the same way. Your bodies are remarkable no matter what stage of healing and restrengthening they are in. Be gentle, be kind, and love yourselves. We'll see you later.